One minute ago, Campi Flegre's earthquakes weren't shaking buildings. They were quietly chewing through the volcanic lid that holds everything back. On the day Naples ran a full-scale evacuation drill, scientists revealed the most recent quakes here are slow and wasteful, tearing up the weak, gas-pressurized cap rock instead of triggering big shocks. This means fewer massive quakes, but a steadily weakening barrier between 350,000 people and a restless magma system. So, is the ground under Pozzuoli getting safer, or are we eroding our last line of defense with every silent rupture? Here is what no one saw coming. Civil protection officials gathered in Pozzuoli's command center, phones buzzing with alerts and screens flashing seismic updates. Just hours after the strongest quake of the year, a magnitude 4.6 quake, shallow and sharp, the government's top emergency planners faced a barrage of urgent questions. Was this another false alarm or the first sign of a deeper crisis? On the same day, scientists released a study rewriting the rules for what these earthquakes actually mean for the city above. The new findings landed like a warning. The ground was not just shaking, it was being quietly dismantled from below. For the planners, the timing was no coincidence. They had spent months rehearsing evacuation routes on paper, running tabletop simulations, and testing radio communications for the day when a real crisis might force 350,000 residents to move. Now, with the city's nerves already frayed by a summer of tremors, every update from the scientific team carried extra weight. The study's message was blunt. These were not classic tectonic quakes. Instead, the slow, wasteful ruptures were chewing through the lid of the caldera, eroding the rock that keeps volatile gases and heat from surging up toward the surface. The risk was not just a big earthquake, but a steady weakening of the last barrier between the magma system and the people living above. Civil protection's role stretched beyond technical coordination. Press conferences became a daily ritual, with officials urging calm while quietly reviewing evacuation plans behind closed doors. Social media feeds filled with maps, safety checklists, and reminders to keep go-bags ready. Emergency meetings ran late into the night, as planners weighed whether to ramp up readiness or hold steady. The memory of the 1980s Bradyseism crisis lingered, when thousands were evacuated, neighborhoods emptied, and Pozzuoli's streets fell silent for months. But this time, the threat felt different. Less about sudden disaster, more about a slow-motion siege. In the background, the city's daily routines continued. School children practiced earthquake drills, bus drivers checked alternate routes, and hospital staff reviewed backup power plans. The sense of urgency was real, but so was the determination to avoid panic. Government broadcasts stressed that preparedness was not a sign of imminent catastrophe, but a necessary response to a system under strain. With the new research in hand, civil protection leaders walked a tightrope balancing transparency with reassurance, and hoping the next alert would be just another exercise, not the start of a true emergency. In Pozzuoli, the ground has always been restless. Long before the latest study or the recent string of shallow earthquakes, the city lived with a different kind of threat, one that rose not as a sudden shock, but as a slow, relentless heaving of the land. Residents still talk about the Brady Seism crisis of the early 1980s. From 1982 to 1984, the earth beneath their feet lifted by nearly one and a half meters. Streets buckled, ancient buildings cracked, and entire neighborhoods were forced to evacuate. For months, the city's rhythm was broken. Families packed into relatives' homes or government shelters, unsure when, or if, they would return. The silence was heavy in those empty streets, broken only by the distant rattle of aftershocks and the constant hum of civil defense broadcasts. The memory of those years is never far from the surface. Older residents remember the long lines for water, the confusion of moving day, and the way the community pulled together through radio updates and neighborly check-ins. Local radio became a lifeline, sharing news of safe routes and reunions, while children practiced earthquake drills in makeshift classrooms, Every household kept a go-bag by the door, and even now, some still do. Bradycism is a peculiar kind of unrest. Instead of one catastrophic event, it brings cycles of swelling and settling, each episode stretching over months or years. The ground here has risen and fallen many times in recorded history, 
But the crisis from 1982 to 1984 stands apart for its scale and social impact. Almost 40,000 people were evacuated at its peak. The city's port and rail lines were rebuilt to match the new elevation, and some buildings were abandoned altogether. Scientists tracked the uplift with a growing network of survey markers and boreholes, measuring each centimeter of change. The numbers told a story of deep forces at work, of fluids and gases pressing upward, straining against the rock above. For today's residents, the lessons of the past shape daily life. Preparedness is woven into the city's culture, from routine drills in schools to the quiet vigilance of shopkeepers who watch for cracks in the plaster. The Brady Seism crisis taught Pozzuoli that unrest is not always dramatic, but it is always personal. Each new tremor is measured not just against scientific charts, but against lived memory. The city's resilience is a legacy, built on decades of adaptation to a restless ground and the ever-present possibility of change. The research team's approach began with a simple question. What exactly is happening beneath Po's Zuoli as the ground lifts and tremors ripple through the city? To answer it, the team built their analysis on a dataset of 56 significant earthquakes recorded from 2020 to 2025. Each event was chosen for its clarity, well-defined signals, reliable depths, and locations directly beneath the area of fastest uplift. Most of these quakes clustered at shallow depths, between 1 and 4 kilometers, right within the fibrous caprock that seals the magmatic system below. Instrumentation made the difference. A dense network of seismic stations, some installed in the last few years, captured the full spectrum of ground motion. High-frequency sensors, broadband arrays, and real-time telemetry fed continuous data back to the central laboratory. The largest event included in the core study reached magnitude 4.4. Later, a magnitude 4.6 quake shook the city, but its characteristics, depth, rupture style, and energy partition fell in line with the earlier events, reinforcing the study's main conclusions rather than upending them. Selection criteria were strict. Only earthquakes with clear waveforms, minimal interference from surface noise, and precise location estimates made the cut. This careful curation ensured that each analyzed event spoke directly to the mechanics of the caprock, not to artifacts of the monitoring system or random seismic background. The team's methods drew on waveform modeling, spectral analysis, and cross-checked AI picks, producing a consistent, high-quality catalog. The result is a dataset that balances breadth and reliability. By focusing on these 56 events, neither the tiniest microquakes nor the rare, damaging outliers the researchers captured the true character of Campi Flegre's unrest. Their evidence base is robust enough to support new insights into how the ground is responding to pressure from below and why the usual rules of earthquake hazard do not always apply in a restless caldera. Earthquakes beneath Campi Flegre are rewriting the rulebook for how seismic energy moves through a restless volcanic system. In most places, a fault snaps and the rupture races along at nearly the speed of sound in rock fast, efficient, and violent, with much of the energy radiating out as shaking. But under Pozzuoli, the story is different. Here, rupture speeds clock in at just 40 to 90% of what is typical for hard, cold crust, slow compared with normal faults. The fractures crawl instead of sprint, slowed by heat, gas pressure, and a rock fabric already riddled with old scars. This sluggish pace is more than a curiosity, it means the caprock is not just hot, but altered and mechanically weak, a patchwork of microcracks and mineral veins already primed for further damage. The energy budget tells the rest of the story. Only 10% of the energy from these quakes escapes as seismic waves. The rest, 90%, vanishes into the rock as heat and off-fault microcracking. Instead of shaking buildings, the energy is spent chewing up the cap driving thousands of tiny fractures through the fibrous seal that holds back the deeper, volatile system. Each event leaves behind a little more damage, a little less resistance, a lid that is incrementally thinner and more permeable than before. This wasteful process has a double edge. On one side, it limits how large an earthquake can get. Shorter, weaker ruptures cap the potential for truly destructive shaking. 
On the other, it steadily erodes the last mechanical barrier between the magmatic reservoir and the surface. The caprock is not failing in a single dramatic snap. It is being unraveled, one slow rupture at a time. Beneath Pozzuoli, the story of Campi Flegre's unrest is written in a narrow band of rock, one to four kilometers down. This is the caprock, a dense, fibrous layer pressed between porous tufts above and deeper clays below. It is not just a geological lid. Its job is to trap the gases and fluids that build pressure in the volcanic system, acting as the last line of defense between the deep reservoir and the city overhead. Seismic imaging and borehole samples reveal a patchwork of mineralized seals and microcracks. The caprock is rich in minerals like tobamorite and etringite, formed by decades of hydrothermal alteration. These fibrous silicates weave through the rock, filling fractures and binding grains together. Laboratory tests show that when this rock is cracked by an earthquake, minerals begin to regrow almost immediately. Under reservoir conditions, with temperatures from 120 to over 200 degrees Celsius, fresh cracks are sealed by new mineral fibers in days to weeks. Healing is not perfect, but it is rapid enough to keep much of the cap rock tight even as it suffers repeated damage. Permeability experiments put numbers to this resilience. The intact cap rock is nearly watertight, with permeability as low as one part in a quintillion square meters. When a quake or uplift event opens new pathways, permeability can spike by several orders of magnitude, letting gas and fluids surge upward. But the self-sealing process quickly kicks in, restoring the barrier and slowing the escape. This cycle of damage and repair means the cap rock is always in flux, never fully intact, never completely breached. Most of the recent earthquakes cluster right in this zone. Instead of breaking through, they chip away at the fabric, creating networks of microcracks that may briefly connect deeper gas pockets to the surface. Over time, the balance between damage and healing shapes how much pressure the system can hold and how much it can safely release. This dynamic, where the rock both fails and repairs itself, controls the rhythm of Campi Flegre's unrest, setting the stage for everything that happens above. On the morning of January 26, 2023, Pozzuoli's main hospital stood at the center of a real-time crisis. A sudden swarm of shallow earthquakes knocked out the power grid, forcing doctors and nurses to move patients by flashlight and battery-powered monitors. Ambulances lined up in the parking lot as staff coordinated an emergency evacuation, shuttling the most vulnerable to backup facilities outside the city's uplift zone. In the confusion, telecommunications faltered, cell towers blinked off, and hospital administrators switched to handheld radios to relay instructions. For hours, families waited in the cold, scanning for updates and hoping for news. The hospital is just one node in a dense web of lifelines stretched across the Campi Flegre caldera. Gas pipelines, high-speed rail lines, and road tunnels all cross the fracture zone beneath Pozzuoli, where the ground is rising fastest and the risk of disruption is highest. During the quake swarm, trains halted mid-route, buses stopped running, and commuters found themselves stranded between neighborhoods. Emergency shelters opened in school gyms and community centers, with volunteers distributing blankets and water by hand. For the 350,000 residents living atop this restless ground, the hazard is not just theoretical. Each episode chips away at the city's sense of security, making the consequences of slow, wasteful earthquakes deeply personal. The daily routines, hospital care, commutes, even phone calls, depend on infrastructure that runs directly over the most unstable part of the caldera. When the cap rock is damaged, it is not only a geological story, but a test of how well the community can protect its most essential services. Earthquake scientists and risk analysts now describe Campi Flegre's unrest as a fork in the road, defined by the strength and permeability of its cap rock. The first path, often called the pressure relief scenario, unfolds if repeated microcracking and slow ruptures keep opening tiny escape routes for volcanic gases. In that case, the cap rock acts like a leaky valve. Gas and fluids vent upward, pressure in the magmatic system drops, and the risk of a sudden explosive eruption is held in check. Surface signals for this pathway include persistent but moderate uplift, and a steady rise in fumarolic emissions, visible at sites like Solfatara and the Pozzuoli Harbor. 
The second path is more precarious. If the influx of gas and heat from below outpaces the caprock's ability to vent, or if self-sealing reactions cannot keep up with accumulating damage, the system approaches a threshold. Here, the cap acts less like a valve and more like a pressure cooker. A critical point is reached where the weakened, thinned lid can no longer contain the buildup. This scenario brings the risk of abrupt failure, potentially triggering violent steam-driven explosions or, in rare cases, opening a pathway for magma ascent. In both paths, the magnitude of earthquakes remains capped by the weak, fractured crust beneath Pozzuoli. Large, devastating quakes, magnitude 6 or magnitude 7, are judged improbable. The real hazard lies in the gradual, cumulative weakening of the barrier itself. Scientists and civil protection officials now track uplift rates, quake frequency, gas chemistry, and subtle shifts in seismic character as leading indicators. They know the direction the system takes may hinge on the smallest changes deep underground. Scientists and civil monitors rely on a suite of real-time signals to track Campi Flegre's evolving state. Uplift is measured with GPS stations scattered across Pozzuoli, logging every millimeter the ground rises. Seismic arrays record not just the number of earthquakes, but their depth, their speed, and how much energy escapes as shaking versus how much is lost to heat and microcracking. The most telling signals come from the shallow zone, one to four kilometers down, where most recent quakes cluster, and where a vertical crack stretching nearly a kilometer has drawn special attention. That fissure, mapped by seismic imaging, aided by AI, may connect deeper magmatic gases to the upper system, acting as a new conduit for pressure and heat. Gas emissions are sampled daily at fumaroles and bubbling vents. Spikes in carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide can hint at fresh input from below or new pathways opening through the caprock. Surface temperature at these sites is tracked with infrared sensors, watching for sudden jumps that could signal rising fluids. Changes in the chemistry of hydrothermal waters, like shifts in dissolved silica or calcium, offer another early warning that cracks are healing or widening, altering how easily gases escape. Fault alignment is monitored by mapping microquake locations over time. When swarms begin to cluster along a new trend, or when small events trace out a vertical path, scientists know the system is reorganizing. The interplay between uplift, quake frequency, gas flux, and new structural connections forms the backbone of now casting. A real-time assessment of whether the caldera is bleeding off pressure or quietly building toward a critical threshold. Every metric is scrutinized, not for a single alarm bell, but for patterns that might signal when the lid is giving way. Today, more than 350,000 people live within 10 kilometers of Campi Flegre's restless ground. As fractures multiply, the system's next move grows harder to predict. Science can reveal warning signs, but uncertainty defines the risk. For Naples, the real threat is not violent shaking. It is the silent, relentless erosion of what holds everything back.